Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm really glad to be able to uh, join such a nice event today. Uh, I'm Takenori Inugai, middle engineer of offshore structure design. Uh, I'm working for Nippon Steel, Sumiki Engineering. Uh, my head office is in Tokyo, so I have some travels with English. So if you have any questions, please speak slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'd like to introduce Haneda International Airport Re-Expansion Project. First, I'd like to introduce our project. A project name is Haneda International Airport Re-Expansion Project. This project had been conducted with 15 member joint venture group. Uh, this is my company. And project period is approximately four years from 2007 to 2010. Contract amount is approximately six billion US dollars. So this is big project. And combined reclamation peer method had been adapted for construction method. This method is called hybrid construction. Hybrid construction is quite rare method. So I don't know another project adapted hybrid construction method. And service life is 100 years. 100 years service life is extremely long for offshore structure. Usu usually service life is 20 years or 30 years. Next uh, project background. Haneda International Airport is in Tokyo. This is Haneda International Airport. There were three existing runways in Haneda International Airport, A, B, C, runway. As shown from this, this graph, the number of passengers using Haneda International Airport is increasing. According to the estimation, over 80 million passengers will use Haneda International Airport in 2022. <laughs> Recently, handling capacity has already reached critical limit, so additional runway was required to meet demands. This is a photo of Haneda International Airport. This area is existing airport, and this is additional airport we call D runway. D runway had been constructed by hybrid construction methods. Reclamation area is 2,020 meter length, and the pier section is 1,100 meter length. Uh, the D runway is located at the mouth of Tama River. So to ensure the river flow and to minimize ecological damage, this construction method is selected. River flow is maintained under the pier section. The pier section has large planar area. Its area is over 500,000 square meters. And the pier section had been constructed, uh, sorry, pier section had consisted of 198 units of jacket structure. Total sea weight for jacket structure is 260,000 metric ton. And jacket pier structure is able to be separated three parts, top side substructure and steel pile foundation. And this is the detail of top side structure. Top side is consisted of steel girder, concrete floorboard, and asphalt pavement. So airplane is running on this asphalt pavement. Uh, this is a uh, unit of jacket pier structure. Jacket, jacket structure is 63 meter width, 45 meter depth, and 30 meter height. And jacket structure is connected with steel pile foundation by means of routed connection. 
In this page, I'd like to explain peer type airport. There are two airports consisted of peer type structure, peer type construction method in the world. One is LaGuardia Airport in United States, and the other is Madeira Airport in Portuguese Republic. And peer type construction is divided into direct peer method and jacket method. Direct peer method has been adopted as construction method for these two airports. On the other hand, jacket method had been adopted for Haneda International Airport. So, Haneda International Airport is the first airport consisted of jacket pier type structure in the world. Jacket pier structures have already been applied for the construction of offshore energy facilities and port or harbor structures. And this is the actual example of offshore energy facility. Jacket structure is used for the foundation together with steel pipe foundation. And this is actual offshore energy facility in Japan. Jacket structure is widely used for the foundation. Nevertheless, jacket pier structures have never been adapted for the foundation of offshore airport. Next, I'd like to explain fatigue analysis by SACS. And this is the actual fatigue clock allows at the steel garden. And these are fatigue clock. If inadequate fatigue design carried out, it is possible to analyze fatigue clock. So it's important to uh, conduct fatigue analysis if cyclic loading acts on the structure. Next, fatigue loading. In the case of offshore jacket structure for oil and gas, reputation previewing fatigue loading is wave loading. So fatigue analysis is conducted in regard to wave loading. Of course, wind loading contributes to fatigue but the uh, effect is very small, so usually it is possible to, uh, sorry, wind loading is neglected. Uh, in the case of offshore, offshore jacket structure for airport, reputation, fatigue loadings, uh, wave loading, and airplane loading. In truth, airplane loading is more principal fatigue loading than wave loading. So in this project, we calculated fatigue damage as a summation of the damage due to wave loading and airplane loading. This is the actual airplane loading. The maximum airplane force is 400 metric ton. And the number of cycle is over uh, 10 million. This is wave loading. Wave parameters and, uh, and number of occurrence is as shown here. Wave height is from 0.25 meter to 4.5 meter. And this is the uh, number of cycles during 100 years. In this page, I'd like to explain wave force calculation <laughs> and very, very complex. <laughs> In this project, Wave forces had been calculated according to Stokes' fifth order theory, as shown in this very complex equation. Usually, wave forces are calculated by spreadsheet, in house program, and etc. for each member. So it takes a long time to calculate wave forces. In this project, we choose SACS because wave force is automatically calculated by SACS. So we could save time to calculate wave motion and first over of jacket structures. Analytical model also made by SACS. Analytical model is consisted of typical nine units of jacket structure to consider the effect of surrounding jacket. And we focus on the central jacket as checking fatigue. Then three-dimensional frame analysis had been conducted by SACS. 
Live load is airplane loading and wave loading. In this page, I'd like to explain how many joints we had to calculate fatigue damage. Fatigue analysis have been conducted at tubular joint. In this project, a unit of jacket structure has 56 tubular joints. At each tubular joint, we had to calculate fatigue damage at 16 checkpoints. So in total, we had to calculate fatigue damage at 896 points per jacket. Unfortunately, we had five different types of jacket structure and t 10 types of airplane loading. So in total, we had to calculate fatigue damage at 44,800 points, many. Next, I'd like to explain fatigue damage. The fatigue damage is calculated by minor rule as shown in this equation. Uh, this is safety factor. Safety factor is decided according to the level of structural importance, weather condition, and corrosion condition. In this project, 1.0 in air and 3.0 sea water. So to calculate fatigue damage, we have to calculate capital N, number of cycles to failure. Number of cy cycles to failure capital N is calculated using SN curves and the hot spot stress range. Various SN curves have already been included in SACS, so we can choose arbitrary SN curves we want to use. So to calculate capital N, we have to get hot spot stress range. Hot spot stress range is calculated this equation. Nominal stress range is automatically calculated by frame analysis. So we have to calculate SCF, stress concentration factor. In this project, for tubular joints, SCF is determined following load pass dependent stimulus equation. In this case, various equations to calculate SCFs have already been included in SACS and automatically calculate SCF. So SGF and the hot spot stress range and the capital N, the number of cycle to failure and fatigue damage are uh, calculated by SACS automatically. And this is the result of fatigue analysis. In this project, total fatigue damage had been calculated as a summation of the damage due to airplane loading and wave loading. The result is Rest on 1.0, so we concluded this structure had enough fatigue strength. Next, I'd like to explain benefits of SACS. In this project, we had to check fatigue damage at over 40,000 points in total. Using SACS, SACS gave us fatigue damage in a matter of minutes, because fatigue damage is uh, automatically calculated by SACS. So we could save manpower and cost. We could save 5 million Japanese yen. And also, design period has also cut down. We could save two months. In consequence, we could achieve Haneda International Airport with expansion project in short period. Detailed design of the jacket structure had finished in 18 months. Again, I'd like to show you efficient fatigue analysis by SACS. User have only to make analytical model and set up the fatigue loadings. After this, all operations are conducted by SACS automatically and we can get fatigue damage. And this is another benefit of SACS. In this project, seismic analysis has been conducted by CAP, Capacity Analysis Program. SACS is widely used in the world and uh, the main program to design offshore structure. So it is often that SACS is compatible with other projects, other softwares. So in this case, uh, we, could, we could convert analytical model, SACS model to CAP model directly. Then 
conduct seismic analysis. So we could save time to make model, a uh, cap model. Conclusion. Nippon Steel Semiki Engineering had designed and fabricated Haneda International Airport, which is the first instance of a jacket used in construction of offshore airport infrastructure in the world. Because such provided a strong tool for fatigue design, the runway had extremely high fatigue strength to stand such a severe condition. Maximum 400 metric ton airplane forces applied over 10 million times as reputation loading. Uh, this is just for reference. To achieve a 100 years service life, our advanced corrosion protection technology has been adapted. In addition to the extre extremely high fatigue strengths designed by SACS. Titanium cover plate is attached on the lower girder and the jacket rake is covered with the stainless steel lining. A Nippon Steel Smiki Engineering had been awarded the Prime Minister Prize for innovation of high corrosion protection technology. Thank you for your kind attention.